three, two, one, sit. Yo guys, we're back again for another ID-based tutorial video. This time we're gonna be talking about gainers. This is the one that everybody wants to do and it's probably the most common trick in base jumping, I would say. It goes right along with the opening sequence of the canopy and it's just perfect for base jumping. Before you even think about doing gainers on base jumps, I would highly recommend that you have extensive gymnastics or diving training. I was a gymnast for about 10 years and I was able to do standing backflips and lots of trampoline, so I, I spent a lot of time on trampoline. I think trampoline is one of the best things uh, that can help you with your aerial awareness because doing tricks in base jumping does take a lot of spatial awareness. If you already have gymnastics or diving training, I would suggest getting at least 50 base jumps first before you even think about trying any flips. Remember, doing flips doesn't make you a badass base jumper. It's nailing your tricks, landing where you want to, and being consistent and in control. That's what makes you a good base jumper. There are some risks though. Because you're rotating backwards, if you pitch too early, you can get your feet wrapped up in the bridle. That's not a good thing. I've done it before and uh, it's not cool. So I'm trying to help you not have that happen. Um, a bridle wrap around the legs is really bad. If it does happen, it's from pitching too early. And the problem is, is that you're rotating away from the bridle. So basically, it'll be wrapped around your legs and then you have to tow it down a ways until the pilot chute actually stops your rotation and then reverses it. And basically, you have to get your foot back up in the air. It can take a lot of altitude to get the bridle off your legs. So understand that this can be really dangerous, especially when you start adding more flips in there. The pitch timing is very crucial. And if you don't do it right, then um, you know you could possibly get hurt really bad or um, die. So understand that this is no joke. You can mess them up. It's best if you can do them off of a really high object, like maybe the New River Gorge Bridge or the KL Tower. The Perrine Bridge is not the best for it because we do have to pitch out of the aerial. So basically you're still pitching in low airspeed and you're not able to belly out before you pitch. So you have to pitch out of the trick. There's a few things to think about. One of them is the pitch timing. So understand that your pitch timing is crucial. If you pitch too early, it can wrap around your legs. If you pitch too late, you can over rotate. On a gainer, it is better to pitch a little bit too late than too early. I think it's best to do these from the rail. So if you haven't jumped off of the rail at the bridge yet, I'd recommend you get really comfortable with that because it's just a better platform to stand on. Once you're comfortable with jumping off the rail and you're ready to try a gainer, you wanna be standing up there, get really relaxed, make sure you're not shaking or like overly fearful. And if the fear is just too much, then just wait for another time. It is a big deal when you do this, so you wanna be ready for it. When we're doing gainers and we're standing on the rail, pretend there's a mat or a crash pad about 10 or 15 feet below you. Basically what you're wanting to do is to jump and land on your back on that mat. That's about the speed of the rotation that you want. I would say about a two second gainer is, is what you're going for from the time you jump until the pitch. The farther you jump out, the more it's going to slow your rotation. So it's good to get object separation, but at the same time, if we try to get too much, you might stall out on your back. If we do stall out on our back, what you wanna do is within three seconds off the bridge, you need to get something out. So that's the rule. Within three seconds, you've gotta pitch. If you are on your back, you can pitch and then roll to the left. Basically, you're rolling away from the pilot chute. It's not gonna be the best opening, but it's what you wanna do. So rule one, within three seconds, pitch. But at the same time, you don't wanna get rushed and pitch too early because you could get the bridle wrap. So we're jumping, we're trying to land on our back on that mat that's about 10 feet down. 
we're waiting for the rotation to come around. We want our feet to be at about 45 degrees. And the reason why I say your feet is because a lot of times people are kind of arched with their knees bent. They think that their legs are at 45 degrees when their feet are still over top of them. So you're trying to pay attention to where your feet are. Once your feet are past 45 degrees, then you wanna pitch out and try to make your body really long to slow the rotation. I think that it's good to jump up at about 45 degrees when you're doing the gainer, not straight out. So it's nice to bring the feet together because if their feet are really wide, then it's riskier as far as a bridle wrap. A couple other things to think about are wind conditions. A lot of people don't think about this, but the wind direction really does matter with these uh, gainers and, and backward rotations. Basically, on the gainer, you want to have a tailwind because as your feet are coming around and you pitch, the bridle and the pilot chute are blowing away from you. If there's a headwind, then when you bring it around, if you pitch too early, it's more likely that you will get a bridle wrap because the bridle and pilot chute are actually blowing towards your feet. They're going more into the rotation when you pitch. So it's more favorable to have a tailwind or no wind at all. When we do these gainers or any aerials, the body position has to be absolutely perfect or it can end tragically. If you feel like you need to try it here, just understand that it can be risky. It's not the best place to learn them. It's also best to do it without a camera because now that our bodies are rotating in space, the camera is more like a hook and it has killed people. So it's best to just leave that. And also look out for any other snag hazards. Even the knee pads can start to become a little bit of a higher risk because it's something bulky on your legs. Elbow pads, you know, it can make it a little bit riskier because that's more for the bridle to wrap around and kind of lock onto. So these are things, if you're going to get into aerials, you have to start thinking about this. So we're basically trading things off. You know, it's good to wear pads, I think, for base jumps, but also if they're gonna start possibly making things higher risk as far as bridle wraps, then we might wanna think about taking them off. You shouldn't be having close calls when you do this kind of stuff. We're not trying to add more risk to the sport that's already risky. We're trying to nail these. So you wanna make sure that you're ready don't push yourself too much. Remember, it should be fun just jumping off of stuff. You don't need to add more danger to, to a base jump. It's always best to have training from a real base jump instructor, but this video will help you along the way towards a gainer.